Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome back. <laughs> There's still a bunch joining. Um, okay, so just as a reminder, an FYI, who are we? What are we doing here? Aligning with success is the theme. And it's an appropriate theme, especially given the talk that I'm going to be giving, which um, may be familiar for some of you. Uh, with respect to this weekend's Master Day. So if you haven't registered for it, do it um, and promote it. We're we're in the business of promotion, guys. That's at the end of the day what our identity is in Niken. We're promoters. And so we want to get really good at promoting important events. This Master Day is going to be uh, important. There's going to be announcements at, at this Master Day that affect what your business strategy is going to be for the next 90 days. Um, so you don't want to miss it. And you want to make sure that people who are going to be important to your business in the next 90 days uh, or over the next 90 days are going to be uh, listening in. Um, so let me just uh, share then what exactly do I mean by aligning with success? Um, you, you know, Success is a frequency at the end of the day. You are either aligned with that frequency, just like health. So um, let's take, for instance, planet Earth, or when you walk into a forest. When you walk into a forest, there's a certain feeling. Feeling is conscious awareness of frequency. That's what feeling is. You have an, a sensory perception that we refer to as feeling, and you can feel the effects of the space and the vibration around you. And, and, uh, and so essentially, when we walk into a forest and we feel good, we go into harmony with the forest. And the feeling that hits our perception is good. It feels great. It feels relaxed. It feels open. It feels expansive. So we, we become aware of the frequency that the forest puts us in. Or for me, it's water. It, it, anytime I get around a large body of water, I mean, I'm like, I'm home. I'm, I'm like a fish. I need to be in or near the water. So that is um, a frequency. And so when we harmonize with success, which is a frequency, and of course, it, it depends on what your definition of success is as to what the frequency is, because success is just sort of a loose term. So if we get really well at defining what we mean by success, then we can then start to align with that frequency. And the thing that I have found over the years uh, that is the most effective interpretation of the def definition of success is that it's not actually a goal achieved. It's the pursuit. It's the frequency that we are in when we are actively pursuing a goal, an objective that is in harmony with our highest good, with that which expands us and makes us feel uh, moving forward in the direction of our ideals. And so what what do you consider your the ideal you? What does it look like? And then you can talk about what it feels like to be in the ideal you. Um, a few weeks ago, we did an assessment where I asked everybody to give me a percentage change in your five pillars of health. And we went through each pillar and everybody gave me their perception of their percentage change in each of those pillars. And what was so great about th that exercise, everybody found that exercise fascinating. It was quite refreshing is because there was notable change in more than one area of your life since your engagement and involvement with NECAN. And it's not always, even though it may have been motivated to be in the business for the finances, it's not always the finances, that, which is the first thing that gets fulfilled. There needs to be an alignment that takes place within the individual before the finances come in. And so that's that, that growth that needs to happen, that alignment, that reassessment, that recalibration that puts us in harmony with what makes success financially in Niken possible. So what I have found and learned uh, over the years is what makes success 
possible, financially speaking, is when we are uh, giving a greater service to a greater number of people. And so it's an outflow, not an inflow. As Ben Woodward would say, success ensues. It's the byproduct of outflow, and outflow is service. And I'm saying this because when we speak and communicate with somebody, we may think we're speaking in their best interest, but we may not be because we may not know what they actually want in terms of their ideal, what does success look like to them? And so it's very, very important that if we're going to bring aligning with success and alignment to our business and prosperity, we need to know who we're working with. We need to know what matters to them, what does success look like for them, and then be of service to helping them realize their potential in that area. So getting back to the idea of alignment being a frequency, how do you know if you're aligned? Well, you feel it. You feel in integrity. You feel aligned or you feel out of alignment. It could be food choices. It could be how you're investing your time in the course of a day. It could be a conversation you're having and you know when you're in alignment with, with success in that conversation or if that's if that conversation is taking you away into a frequency where the frequency is frustration. By the way, I know how that feels. I felt it. I feel it. The question is not whether we're going to feel those things. It's whether we can get out of that feeling and into the feeling that is in alignment with success. The faster we align with success, the faster we have tune into and, and align with the frequency that is in harmony with our best interests and the best interests of the people we're, we're trying to serve, then we're going to get, we're going to make progress. Things are going to happen because everything is about frequency. Again, if I walk into a forest, angry, upset, and I don't allow the forest, the interaction with the forest to hit my consciousness, I don't look, I don't breathe, I, I don't smell, I don't hear the sounds. If I tune out the forest, I can hold on to my anger. But the second I tune into the forest or to the water, it's hard to stay tuned into the anger. The anger starts to dissipate. So when we align with success, we literally start to dissipate the things that are holding us back from success, the feelings, the thoughts, and so forth. So aligning with success has always been the theme of this call because it's a constant reminder that we need to stay aligned with and we need to define what is our understanding of success. So back to the definition, as Earl Nightingale shared with my mentor and I've shared with you and others, success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal, meaning we need to know what is worthy of our life that's worth pursuing. And there, and then success is the pursuit itself. It's not a, it's not a finish line. It's not a destination. It's not an achievement. It's the actual pursuit. We're moving towards that ideal. And if that ideal expands us in the context of Niken, that would be in each of the five pillars of well-being, you would, you would probably argue that this is one of the best definitions of success there is, an improvement in our life in each of the key areas of our life, a movement toward a balanced life. So Niken has always had the greatest GPS for helping us to align our, our minds, our bodies, our, our attitudes, our 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 work towards harmony with an ideal that's very inclusive. There's not a single person alive who would argue, I don't want a healthier body, a healthier mind, a healthier family, a healthier society to live in and, and healthier finances. No one would say that's not a good idea. So, you know, Nikan's reason for being and, and its philosophy is all encompassing and it's all inclusive. Um, and I think that's an important thing to keep in mind when when we're engaging in any type of Nikan business or contact with other people is to keep, uh, you know, keep the main thing, the main thing, which is why our presentation book begins with the five pillars, why my PowerPoints begin with the five pillars. Everything stems from an alignment. We have to first 
recognize where there is a misalignment and then help bring alignment. Now, does this end with prospecting or does this also involve our downline? If you're a coach or a mentor, if you're somebody who's involved with other people on your team, then every engagement needs to be one that is seeking a, a balance, one that is helping to align both minds with success. So it comes right back to, and I'll tell you what I mean by this, because I, I know this experience is true. And before you speak up here, Bart, give me a second. You can get into a conversation that could last a long time with somebody and accomplish absolutely nothing. Now, how many of you have time to waste? Show of hands. How many of you have time to waste? No. So how do you know if your conversation, your time together was actually fruitful? Th there should be some way of knowing, right? Otherwise, you can find yourself spending a lot of time uh, doing not very productive things. So it's important that you establish the purpose of the call, you establish what, what the objective is, what, what are we looking to achieve here? What is the alignment that we're seeking? Because when you get on the same page, then you're, we're trying to solve a problem or move towards the solution versus being at odds or just having an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're putting on your role as a, as a mentor, as a coach, that that it's about formulating finding a common purpose that's what brings that relationship together at that moment and then to align with success would be to define what would it look like if if the conclusion of this call is successful now, i'll give an example and then we'll get to you barb when we went down to irvine uh, the five of us and met with with luis and his team we had an agenda but we also started the entire process. That first meeting began with defining what it would look like if we were successful in this four days of meetings. We had a clear understanding of our own personal requirements, what it was that each of us brought to this as a need. And it wasn't the same for any one of us, by the way, which is kind of interesting. We all had our own needs and our own desires that we wished to be fulfilled. But by putting it on the table, it allows us to then measure the activities, the actions, the commentary, et cetera, against that. And then at the end, we can decide, did we succeed? Did we achieve the objective? And hands down, we, that, we did that and more because we actually accomplished multiple objectives, not just our own. So I think it's really important that we start to practice aligning with success in our everyday communications. And I'm talking about things like family, um, children, um, you know, significant others and whatnot. I think it's really important that we think the thoughts of aligning with success. We, we speak the language of aligning with success. Barbara, you have your hand up. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I think it's really important that we involve all our team members, active or inactive, in any conversations that we're going to have, because some of them are showing a new renewed interest as time goes on, because of bits and pieces of what they've been hearing, it's piquing their interest. And if we start asking questions, it actually stimulates them to think of more questions to ask that they need to have to determine how they're going to go forward. Do they want to continue to be a wholesale customer or do they really want to reactivate their business? And I have several um, consultants that have been sitting on the fence for a long time, the occasional order, but because of what they've been hearing from constant communication to the group, they are now asking different questions, questions that are much more pointed about, I've been hearing about the new Niken. It sounds quite exciting. It's sounding very positive. And so I've been encouraging them to reach out to me privately if they want to, 
or through a group email and ask their questions. What is it that is uppermost in their mind that they need answered for them to be able to be in a, in a position to make a decision? If they're not ready to make a decision yet, that's okay. Continue to come up with the questions that are relevant to them to be able to make the decision that's right for them. Because and if, I, I would add to that, Barbara. Go ahead, sorry. If the decision feels right for them, they're going to be more motivated to be committed and connected to everybody else that's going forward. So, okay. I mean, some of it is happening slowly, but even when I was out of commission after my surgery, I was still connecting with some of them on a limited basis, but they, they were still connected. And just today, I had a customer reach out to me and he wasn't aware that I'd been sending out all these updates because he and his wife had a joint email and she wasn't relaying any of the information over to him. So he gave me his private email because he totally missed out on the filter offerings and others. And so now I'm dealing directly with him because he's been a good customer in the past. But his wife just wasn't communicating any of the emails that were being sent to their joint email. So... It was just him calling me about a challenge he had with a product. That let, let me just expand the conversation that. So it's not so solution. So it's not so specific to one thing. Yeah. Let me generalize that a little bit more. It's not just you know we're not talking about just a single call from a single person. We're talking about just the way you approach your business as a as a service provider, and yeah. and but at the same time. You're not a welfare state. And we tend to attract into NECAN caregivers who are okay with the psychological reward of feeling like they're a caregiver. NECAN provides them with the mechanism to be a caregiver. But, but people need to make a living. And if you're going to attract people who need to make a living and you don't know how to do that with NECAN, there's going to be a challenge. You're not going to feel adequate in being able to attract them. You're not going to feel adequate in being able to guide or assist them. Now, <laughs> one thing for sure, you all have an upline and you all have an upline that knows how to answer the tough questions and how to show them the money, as I say. So just don't forget that, that that's always in your back pocket. But becoming competent yourself means having some clearly defined understanding of what does it look like to be success oriented and the difference between being of service and being of service that produ produces an, an, a result is that you measure it you're measuring the outcome and that outcome is either in alignment or not in alignment with with what it is that your stated objectives are so this means you need to become a little bit more objective and Entrepreneurs, CEOs, are not action-oriented. They're results-oriented. Employees are action-oriented. They don't care what the results are. They do the action. When it's time to leave, they leave, and then they go live their life. Employees are action-oriented. Entrepreneurs are results-oriented. And the thing about being an entrepreneur that's going to guarantee you have a future in terms of results is that you're making money that you're profitable, that your business that your is profitable. Now, um, one other thing with respect to aligning with success, I want to just drop this on you and then I want to turn the page here. Um, one of the golden rules I think is critical to success in, in this business or any business is to define the business as something separate from you. So in network marketing, we sign an application form. We usually put our social insurance number. We put our name. And so we think I am this thing called a distributor rather than I own a distributorship. Those are two very different things. 
and have a very different set of paradigms associated with them. If you consider yourself as a Nikan distributor, that identity that you're attached to limits you. But if you think of yourself as a CEO that owns um, and that has a stake in a Nikan distributorship, then that's not limited. Because as a CEO, you're a decision maker for the for the business, but the business is independent of you. And you start to see the business as something that requires objective thought processes, aligning with success. What does it mean if your business is aligned with success? See, now you move away from action-oriented to results-oriented thinking by giving your business an identity. So if you haven't already done that, I'm not saying that you have to go out and register a corporation or anything like that, although at some point in time, that may be necessary. But right now, give your business a name. Give it a, a, a call sign. You know, who, who is, who's, uh, what is this business going to uh, attract? What is the identity that you're going to associate others to? For instance, in, in um, Latin America, I asked this question at the back of the room at one of the events in California, Ben's event in California, I had a bunch of my Royal Diamonds there who were guest speakers. And I said, you know, you guys have this beautiful thing where everybody has their their names, their, their, their group has a name. They give the group an identity. It has a, just an arbitrary name, like Gloria Nava. Her, her organization is known as Koi, as in Koi Fish. And they all have taken on some adaptation of a, a Japanese name or something of that suit. One is J Jiku, another one is Kuri, just these names. They're just arbitrary names that sound interesting or or maybe have some meaning. Orika. Or, what is it? Orika. Orika, Orika yeah. with Veronica. Yeah. So I, I asked them, uh, at what rank do you encourage your team members to break off and have their own group identity? And they said, we don't tell them when to do that. They do it when they're ready to take on leadership. Thought, oh, that's really interesting. So it could literally be any rank. It doesn't have to. I would have thought, you know, when you hit gold, you should do this. Or when you hit platinum, you should be thinking this. I, I, would, I would have thought it would have been part of their architecture, their structure. But it wasn't. It was simply when you're ready to lead, then that's when you should be doing it. And so it's been organically doing that. And I'm telling you, it is responsible in a huge way for the incredible success that continues to happen in Latin America because they built into their, their business model a culture of leadership taking ownership of their business. And they give their business or their group a group identity. So I think Gloria's business is actually co called Koi something corporation, LTD, whatever. Um, I'm going to mute 540 because it's just, it's coming in and out. Um, so, so giving your, and, but, but her group is also known as Koi. And then everybody within that Koi, everybody in Latin America pretty much is under a Koi, but Within that group, then everybody who is ident self-identified as a leader starts to give their group a name and so on and so forth. And so I don't hear that in North America at all. Nobody is identifying themselves as a leader and the head of a group and giving the group a name. So I think we need to build that culture into our new Nikan because it is it is synchronistic with aligning with success, giving people a sense of identity and ownership of their business, a thing that's separate and apart from themselves as the individual. So if you haven't done this yet, that your homework for this next week is to come up with a name that you're going to identify your, your group as um, and, and start I like sharing that with your with your team and maybe even go as far as uh, reaching to these companies for like 15 bucks, they can give you a logo or something like that. And then you can start using your logo on some of your materials and your emails and things like that, so that you start to create a presence. And how do you think that's going to look when your customers or your consultants see 
um, that you have gone away from being the individual and now you're representing a, a team, a group. And you may be the only person at this moment who's decided to be the leader and you're the only one on the team, but it's the beginning of an identity. And if we understand how law of attraction works, my name, French Connection, that's French Connection. No, international would be a corporation. Group is not a corporation. Group is just a name. So you could say Team French Connection or French Connection Team. There's an identity. Um, go get a logo made. So I think getting, being specific about something like this shifts your focus away from you, the individual, to you, the business owner. You move from the E-quadrant mentality, which most people are currently running their Nikan business as, an E-quadrant, a retailer, down to the B-quadrant, or excuse me, the, the E-quadrant, correction, you move from the E-quadrant to the S-quadrant, as a small business owner, you're giving your name, your business an identity, the name of a group, and now you're starting to actually attract the thoughts and the thought processes of that, which will propel you toward the B quadrant, the building of an organization. So I think it's, it's really, really important that if we don't migrate mentally and emotionally, where we understand success is a migration, it's a movement towards something then we're not we're going to be we're just going to be repeat rinse repeat rinse repeat every day every week every month is just the same as last month where's the progression in that it gets boring it gets taxing it's like an elastic band eventually the elasticity goes away there's no more tension so so start with giving your business an identity that is not you and i think it's really really important i can't underscore this enough how important it is for you to disassociate yourself as the business and give your business its own identity. And then you now, as the owner of that business, can introduce yourself to people. What are you? What do you do? Who are you? You know, I'm the CEO of Good Vibrations International. What does Good Vibrations International do? Well, first of all, just by st stating that I'm the CEO <laughs> of Good Vibrations International, um, that I'm, I'm making a statement. I'm the chief executive officer of a company. How many people are the chief executive officer of a company? 95% of the population, or excuse me, 75% of the population are in the E quadrant. They're not the CEO. So already you've make your, made yourself part of the 25% that is potentially the CEO. Okay, so then just again, what am I talking about here? Aligning with success. Success is a frequency. A frequency is defined. When you give definition to it, you start to align to it. You can then attract the feeling and all the benefits that go with that association to that frequency. Now, any, uh, any, um, yeah, uh, CEO Silent Impact. That's right. Barbara has a company called Silent Impact. That's, that's a great, great name. And I think everybody ought to work on their, their business identity. Um, any question before I switch gears? Any thoughts? I'll say um, I, I love that I have a team name and, and we have team t-shirts now. Um, and I think it's great. Debbie's on listening because I think it is great to encourage team members to, to create their own team. And I think somehow... I don't know. I don't know if it, I mean, she's a part of the team that I've created, but I think it's also great for her to create her own team. So what, do you, what are your thoughts about that? Absolutely. It, it's the difference between the mentality of being a downline versus the mentality of being an upline. Mm -hmm. It's a mentality. And so how we identify ourself, how we identify with our story or the story that we're creating is critical to what we attract. It's critical to what's going to come into our, our space. So it, it all begins with this. I think the world, the real problem with the world, and you've heard me say it on this call, the biggest challenge that planet Earth has is it has an identity crisis. 
And if that isn't plain Jane obvious today with the dialogue that's going on, you know, people don't even know what sex they are anymore or how to define that. So we're talking about a major identity crisis, right? And so I think that creates all the problems when people don't know who they are, and then they seek approval from others in order to feel like who they are matters. When they're not connected to the higher source, they're going to look to the outside rather than the inside, and they're always looking in the wrong place if they're looking outside. So, so what we're talking about doing is establishing a foothold for who you are and what you are representing. You're defining it and aligning to it, and then you're going to attract your tribe. You're going to attract people who can identify with that frequency, just like people who like to be in the forest. You know, hang out in the forest, and pretty soon you're not going to be alone. There's other people who actually like being in the forest, or go to a park, or go to the waterfront, and you're going to find, oh, there's other people here. I guess they like it here. So, yeah, you're going to find people who identify with what you've aligned it with. But make it clear, what are you aligning with? Because if you're not aligned with anything, you're an action-oriented person that doesn't have direction where that action is concerned. It's like being in a rowboat, okay? Imagine this, you're in a rowboat, you got one oar in the water, and you're rowing, and you're rowing, and you're rowing, and as far as you're concerned, you're working as hard as anyone could possibly work, and where's that boat going? Around in circle. <laughs> exactly. Nowhere. Just this circle. So don't be that person who's just action oriented. Point the boat in a direction and make sure that you got both oars in the water and you're moving every minute with every stroke, you're getting in motion going in the direction you want to be going. Barbara. Something that has been expressed to me fairly recently, and I oh. It's just this year that I've been hearing it fairly consistently. These people that are considering um, relaunching their business. They're talking now about having a separate credit card just for business. Uh -huh. They're Good. talking now about having a tracking system. And the expression is, they haven't made their decision yet, but their expression is, if I decide to do it again, this is what I'm going to do differently. Good. Have a separate Good. credit card, have a tracking system, be more consistent in connecting, do proper follow-up and track my inventory. If I have loaners, I lost so much in loaning out to people in the past. Um, you know, I've lost thousands of dollars by loaning product out and then forgetting who I gave it to because I hadn't kept a good record. Proper so record speaking of, speaking of record keeping and tracking, you know the Nikan Share app has its own uh, built-in CRM. CRM system. So, and and if you're a business owner, if you're if you're a professional in any form of business or sales, and you're not keeping track of the communications you're having with people and the follow up and so forth, then you're not a professional. So. Again, when we're aligning with success, what does it look like? What does it feel like? Who would you want to be engaged with in a business enterprise? It, it, obviously, you'd want to be engaged with someone who's professional, who appears professional, who speaks professionally, who, I mean, doesn't mean you're not human. I'm just saying there's a there's a certain protocol when it comes to professionalism. And it's important, I think, for Niken, that we have a professional environment for people. I want to go to a meeting. And I want to make if I'm bringing a guest to a meeting, how do I want that guest to feel when they arrive? What do I want that guest to experience when they arrive? I want them to experience professionalism. I conduct myself in Niken as a professional. I always have. I earn a professional income. Now, did I earn the professional income before I acted as a professional? Or did I act as a professional before I earned a professional income? Well, I don't know. Yeah. 
<laughs> I was aligned with success. I was aligned with professionalism and attracted. I, I think it was Susan Carver at, at some meeting years ago. She said to me, how is it that everybody in your downline is professionals, are professionals? What a surprise. Well, if you create a professional environment and you treat people with as a professional, courteous, mindful, respectful, proper language, all of those things, proper appearance, you, you conduct yourself as a professional and they identify with that because they're a professional, they're going to see Nikan as an option for themselves. But if you're not professional and you're not conducting yourself as a professional, you have really very little chance of attracting a professional because like they it. have to identify with the success that you're projecting. And if they can't identify with that, they'll, they won't be interested or they'll leave. So what is your definition? Because that's what's going to attract. That's what you're going to attract. And now I have to also say, uh, many, some of you saw my photos. There's a photo of me before Niken where I'm leaning against uh, uh, one of my, my guys, three guys in the electri uh, as an electrician. I'm wearing a sweatshirt, sweatpants, and um, you know, construction boots, and my hair is all disheveled. And, and that was my life as an electrician. Two years later, I'm in a suit on stage in front of thousands of people. What changed? I didn't bring my electrician to my business. I left that identity behind and I adopted a new identity and conducted myself in that new identity and became that person. This is really what it means to die and be reborn. You die the death, you let that person go. You just say, thanks, sayonara done been there done that got the t-shirt that doesn't serve me anymore and you then you adopt a new identity if you've read anything read this the power of awareness by neville it's all about that when you start to assume a new identity then you become the new identity and what niken is doing as a corporation right now is assuming a new identity now there's going to be roots, firmly roots that are rooted in Niken's beginnings that you're going to see. That's the Niken I remember. That's the Niken I know that is, is uh, rock solid. But you're going to see nuances in the new identity because we want to attract a whole new audience, a whole new audience. I want this call not to be 20 or 30 people. I want this call to be two or 3,000 people because I'm worth it. What I bring to the table is as good as it gets, my friends. And so I should be in front of a few thousand people. And that means we need to do a better job, myself included, of projecting into the world who we are. Madeline, you have your hand up kind of like this. You're muted. I, I apologize. Looking for the little hand down here and couldn't find it. Um, I'm glad to see Debbie on this evening because I've already connected to Debbie and to um, Sherry. The other thing that's missing in Niken is diversity, and we can see it here this evening. Um, and so if you remember at the um, 30th convention in San Diego, Barb Satterwhite and I, we, we both have had larger percentages of African Americans until Sherry's new expansion here with um, Debbie. And, um, and we've worked collaboratively together, Barb and I have. So we formed a, a mastermind team called Better Together. Remember Tyra Andrews, and she walked across stage and had a goal, she became a gold and had her whole family there, brought a whole truckload down from somewhere else in Northern um, um, California but it fell apart when she left. She, um, when she left Niken and took quite a following with her. But I have, similar to Debbie coming back, I have three African-American couples that were with me 15, 20, and 23 years ago that are now reinstating. And geographically, it's the greater Akron, um, Cleveland, and the town that I live in. And 
just in meeting already with them, the special needs of communicating with the African-American community. So I had already reached out to Debbie. So in your concept of, of special teams, uh, I, I think that diversity and again, the Hispanic community, we, um, in my area, we're 31% Latino, the West side of Cleveland is about 45% and um, 20, 25% African-American. Downtown Cleveland is probably 70% African-American. And so these are niche markets as well as the focus on intergenerational families. And I'm so impressed with Debbie's intergenerational family. So we've already had a couple meetings and um, I just sent her a, another text again now and we've already reached out. But I think in the concept of our collaboration and Mike, I sent to you and Ben way back seven and a half years ago, I don't know whether you've had a chance to look at it yet, but I found it in Dropbox. I was looking for a mentoring that Dave did with my Jerome Carter and it it's 10 years old. Uh, to send to him. And I found the one that Ben did on diversity seven and a half years ago. I sent it to you in Dropbox as well. And it just needs to be updated, but it's done exceptionally well. He wrote back to me and said he forgot that he even did it. And um, so even as a um, the concept of mastermind teams, but mastermind teams, putting them in collaboration French market in, that you have in Montreal with French markets that are in certain cities in the United States, you know, as, as we look at our North American expansion, just as the team of the five of you um, went through four days of norming and forming as a team with your diverse backgrounds to one team, one dream, like the old theme of the original uh, Team Diamond. And I, I think that concept of increasing diversity and how we can work collaboratively geographically in the United States. Um, I was thinking the Greater Cleveland downtown um, next year on Mayo de Cinco, they're planning on having um, downtown Cleveland with the rock and roll. Okay, be real fast. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> this is another thought I have to throw out is um, they're going to have a Cinco de Mayo big event and they want and they're looking for an international um, company president uh, to be a keynote speaker or to be a, so we have an international CEO from Mexico, you know, and, but we, if we on we, this call are international CEOs, I know we are. So if uh, each of us are individually, but I'm talking about, just think about this. So, um, the, the two diamonds that are in Florida with having a Hispanic, another re Hang, hang on, Madeline, That's, this is going in a different direction than I want to take it. But is it not another way of when you were talking about, is it, can it be another form of team identity to work collaboratively? No, no it's not. You want to that, work. No, we, team no, better. we don't so, want a melting pot. That's not what we want. What okay. we want is diversity. What we want is individuals stepping up and being and taking ownership of their business, their identity, the things that they want to bring. Niken is so many things in so many different ways, we can't fit it all into one sock. And so we we don't want to encourage, we, we're going to encourage collaboration, but it's through diversity, it's through each, you know, everybody taking ownership of their part. And that creates that creates the ability to expand. For instance, some of you on this call may not be TikTokers. Why don't we have a TikToker? It seems to me that if you want to be in business and you want to get the word out, you ought to be on TikTok. So clearly we need to recruit some people who are on TikTok. Get out there. Start asking people, are you on TikTok? I got a business idea. I'm talking about where we're not trying to fit everybody into a mold. What we're trying to do is create individual expressions of what Nikin can be in different dynamics, that those dynamics can be um, ethnic groups, those dynamics can be cities, uh, those dynamics can be so many different things. The idea here is we collaborate, but we're building a garden that has so many different um, forms of produce, if you will, and, and that's that's really what's important here. And it starts here and now. It has to be with each of us receiving the, our marching orders and going out and building out our 
organizations, our teams, our identity, not being part of one team, one dream. It's one theme, many dreams. And so that's the differential. The way like, we did it. I, I like that one theme, many dreams. Many dreams. That's and so cool. I know I just made it up. It's really good. <laughs> Make sure that it's documented. And that is really that's, cool. That's no, that's that it. Down. Yeah, write it down. It's a key point. What take it Paul, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I wanted just to be brief. Uh, I Yeah, Debbie, it was great to have Debbie Jones in uh, Japan. But uh, my, the name for my uh, company used to be uh, Gabios Wellness Center. And then I changed it. I expanded it to Nikan Gabios Wellness Network. Because a center seemed like it was a, a care, a place where you got treatment or something. And a wellness network it's all kinds of people and then they can all have their own names but they're part of this wellness network so that's that's what we did anyway and we're in full expansion mode now and so on cool i i haven't gotten to and i'm not going to get to um the presentation i've been working on but um it, it is it is the the what presentation what what do you you know show me the money presentation um there are bits and pieces of it you've already seen, but I've incorporated um, the uh, the Niken information, basically the presentations that Niken has been doing with respect to the powerhouse and the 18K club. And I do want to make mention of this because I think I did in the last call how relevant this is. So um, we know that there are things, Cher, Cher, you got your hand up before I jump into that? Go ahead. Yeah, I well, I don't want to get off sub, take off subject, but but speaking about that, I I'm the better way you kind of change a few of the slides. Are we going to have that as a live presentation on a weekly basis? Is that a goal? So, well, I don't know. Um, we have not yet locked in our rhythm of the business calendar. So one of the meetings, upcoming meetings with Luis with the executive team, is to okay. actually lock in the rhythm business, the rhythm calendar. So we need to identify what meetings are really critical to the rhythm um, and who who should be doing what the thing with with the online content it's it's great it's great to have that as a support but we what we what would make it really great is if i did it one week you did it the next week paul did it the next week madeline did it the next week so what we were actually creating was was a rotation of people. And so part of the event has, has to happen, but by creating speaker opportunities, it's an opportunity as an, it's now a platform that can be an opportunity for a would-be speaker to come in mm -hmm. and start doing a part. So it would it's good if we can then identify roles within the presentation and have, I don't know if you recall, the wellness preview used to be the front end was the intro, the back end was the business and the middle was the products. And where would you stick the newbie always? The product section yeah, is the very first thing that they're familiar with and they're excited about and they want to do demos and so forth is the product section. So the newbie right. would always be given the, the product section when it yeah. came to them starting to be a presenter. So we, we want to create opportunities for people to start showcasing their talents. But, but this is a big but in this new world. We are not presenters, we're facilitators. Presentations can be done digitally. So there is a need for presentations to be done where the live dynamic is something that is really needed versus I can have a video of the presentation. So we need to start looking at what would the live dynamic look like? One of the presentations, Leo, uh, I don't know that he's doing at this point, I don't think he is, but would definitely be encouraged is a, a meeting where people get to hear stories. That's all they get to hear. They and, don't need and, information. Well, that's I'm doing that. I'm doing that. I duplicated it based on what Leo did. So I right before this call every Monday night, we have well. And so so how does that how does that meeting go? How does that meeting feed the the activities and the, the the results of the the pipeline if you will how does it feed the pipeline 
I mean, you know, some some weeks I have more people than others. Um, and I, I, I've been working on keeping it very short, the story short. So it's a short recording because I feel like I'm using, I'm feeling like the recording is, is, is what is getting shared more than the actual live event. Then don't so, record it. Don't record it. Just if you want the live event to be a live event, because we can take some liberties there that we can't really in a recording. Yeah. yeah. Then, then make it a live event. Um, I, 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 there's plenty of product opportunities during the week. I'll give you a perfect reason why I'm, I'm asking this. I've been doing, as I've said before, cold marketing. I target massage therapists partially because I'm a massage therapist and I've built a, you know, an exciting business. So I'm looking for those people and it's just a quick thing. I can, I can do it in 10 minutes. I can reach out for people and send them information and it's quick, quick. So um, I had somebody that responded to me today and she said, you know, I was in the can still use the products. I'm, you know, she's a massage therapist and she said, probably our paths across. I don't have a face with her. I don't know if, if they have or not, but she said, my understanding was Nikan was, had been closed. You know, other people have thought that before. And so I said, no, we're very much alive and well. And as a matter of fact, this is a really exciting time to look at the business again. So she said, you know, what can you show me? And again, I'm like, you know, well, it depends on, I mean, I really want to have a conversation with her. I didn't want to throw her into a presentation without having, so we're, we have a Zoom scheduled in a couple of days, Perfect. you know, and I thought, gosh, I mean, I really wish we had something. I mean, at one point, the last time we were doing The Better Way, it was myself and Kimball. We were yep. doing it. And it was so, I was so unenergized because people weren't co coming to it and it needed right. some tweaking anyhow. So right. we stopped and then, and then we started with the, you know, balanced life, happy life. And we thought that there was going to be a business, like, why couldn't we have a business rotation in there? And we well, there is, there is, there is a business presentation that I'm working on. There's the one that, right. that I've shared a better way, but there, there is yeah. a business presentation, which is the business launch and uh, the business plan and launch strategy where it's the show me the money presentation. So that I'm hoping to at least start live okay. soon, like within a couple Good. of weeks. Thank you. And and I'm right now I'm just sort of doing it to sort of hone it in and see what it keeps, what what stays, what goes. It does focus though um, the launch strategy as the powerhouse and the 18K. And now I have to share this with everybody, um, Barb. I, I wanted I want to get this point across uh, be before switching to you. So here's something I want you all to really think about. And I'm pretty sure I said it before, but I'm, I can't recall if I said it on this call. How many of you, raise your hand, uh, were involved in NECAN when, when it was a 20,000 point silver in one month? Yeah. Oh, okay. Me. At least, at least half of you, uh, more than half of you. Okay. So rem now how many of you um, achieved it 20,000 points volume in a month and, and went silver. Okay. Again, show of hands. Okay. Probably how many of you helped somebody achieve silver 20,000 points volume in one month? Okay. Many. many. Okay. So many. So you had as a standard operating procedure, 20. a certain way of doing Niken where 20,000 points volume in a month was the norm. That was what you did. It wasn't what you didn't do. It was what you did. And you did it. And you did it more than once. And everybody, that's how we got all many, you know, 5,000 plus silvers. So, so then the question is, if, if that's what we did to generate 20,000 points in a month and help somebody go silver, and we did it, then what if we did that with today's compensation plan? What would happen if we did that, what we did with today's compensation plan? What would be what? nice is a lot of those little 500 business units with more retail customers. You got to have a lot more people have to have. Well, what happened then is what I'm talking about. I'm saying there was a certain way of approaching the business and launching somebody into the business that what happened was when Nikan lowered the requirements for silver. Two or three times, I think it happened to the point where it is now. We lowered our standard of operating. 
instead of maintaining our standard of operating and it's like they lowered the high jump and in, and instead of jumping up here we said oh well this is all you have to do to jump so let's just do this so instead of running the four minute mile and and Nikan's saying you know uh well we're going to call a mile a quarter mile a mile oh then i don't have to run as hard we changed the way we operated, lowered the standard along with it instead of doing the opposite. What we should have done in hindsight is we should have said, silver, uh-uh, with this new condition, we should be breaking golds in a month because it's yeah. the same thing. Right. It's less. It's actually, it's actually less. It's 90%. 18,000 points, an 18K club, three silvers, is 90% of what one silver was. And you guys own that. Those of you who haven't done this, I can't you can't speak to this, but those of you who have, you own that in your vibration, you own that in your frequency, you own that in your consciousness. You did that. You know what that was. You felt it, you've done it, you've experienced it, and that's what it was. 20,000 points in a month. Now, why then would 6,000 points in a month be a challenge to you? And Mike, the current 18K is over three months. We had the Paragon, which was Correct. 60 over three months. Correct. The current 18K is over three months. It's not one month. You guys on this call did 20,000 point silvers in a month. Are you telling me you can't do that anymore? Well, and some of us did 60K in one month. 60,000 in a month. And I'm saying what changed was we changed our attitude. We changed our perception. And, and here's why I can prove that. Is there less a need to make money today than then? Of course no. not. More, more, no. So the need to make money hasn't changed. Has the need to make more money gone up or down? Up. Cost of living. Inflation up. and so forth. So the require the need the public's need has not diminished what has diminished is our expectation our operating procedure yeah we now expect a very different level of operating rather than a certain level of operating that created success in the past you superimpose that current level of op that level of operating in the past to today's compensation plan, and 18K should be your new norm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to suggest that to this group that you take it upon yourself to recalibrate and remind yourself that you did that as a rule, and now we need to make 18K the new norm. Now, what would happen... If that was your new norm, take a piece of paper and a pen, and I want you to reverse engineer what a launch would look like if you were starting me today. Mm -hmm. Mike, and what you would expect to happen launching me today so that I achieve 18K in one month, because it used mm -hmm. to be silver in one month. We're talking the same damn thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... I, I really want you to think about that. Would you have a problem introducing me to the idea of it, of um, starting with one, two, or three packs, 500, 1,500, or 2,500 points? Would that be an issue? Or was that not what you did? We did. Okay. The 15th of the month, the middle of the month, the month before we were you were getting ready. And so the 15th of the month, this is how I operated. So if it was, and this is about the middle part of the month. And so we were planning on August and you were getting everyone lined up. You were identifying who were the people that were going to reach a, a level. They were going to go executive perhaps. Um, in this case, it would be going silver really. So, um, but you were lining lots of people up and you were lining up events and conversations and activities. Correct. Okay. The other right. tool, the other tool that I use is hey guys, like, Madeline. I've been really patient. Thank you guys so much. Okay, Bob Proctor says, "Take it to the ridiculous." Right, Mike. I'm going to take your statement that you said because I mentioned the 21 club, and Mike goes, "No, 30, 30 people in a month. So do 30 people in a month. That's eight people in a week. 
you take it to the ridiculous, if you take it to the ridiculous, that's 36 waterfalls. Or you can take it and do the packs and do the things and break it down that way. Good, better, best. And But it's a numbers game and we've got to up our numbers. Now, one thing that was brought across from headquarters that I thought was pretty powerful was um, to look at where we are right now and use the things we have. One, the powerhouse, two, the KDB challenge. And then there was a, a couple of other things that are in the hopper right now that we have, but I like the KDB challenge. So we've launched the thing saying, get your team together. We're gonna start the KDB challenge in August one, right? So you gotta get your kit, you gotta get your stuff. And then you got to find people to do it with you, right? You got to find your buddy. You got to get your packs and you're getting your supplies. You're also getting your toolkit together. Everybody should have the precision. Everybody should have their, their stuff in their car to show their extra insoles, their whatever you need to have in your toolkit, right? I mean, I just did it at, at church on Sunday and I, I had, I sold the insoles. I've got gloves out. I've got a mag flex out i've got a couple of things out but that's because i'm just rekindling these people but we have customer bases i know everybody on this call has at least 50 customers if not more or dormant consultants either way they're sort of the same thing let's wake them up let's rally the trees let's see who wants to play and then look at doing your own 30 i don't know what we're going to call it mike 30 team call 30 people a month, you know, to- It's a launch up. strategy. It's 30 it and 30, it or it's 30, 30 and 21. I mean, technically it would be, how quickly can we get through these 30 presentations in the next couple of weeks? Because if you're doing <laughs> that, right? Sherry, if you you're doing that, do hang weeks. on, one, yeah. one little caveat. Something that Linda Proctor said that I will never forget when she met Bob Proctor, Bob took her out to lunch and she was making $25,000 a year in insurance. And Bob took her out to lunch and he said, I want you to do two things. From this point forward, I want you to just do two things. One, I want you to be in front of somebody at nine o'clock in the morning, every morning, 9 a.m. Two, I want you to ask everybody you meet to buy a $100,000 insurance policy. Now they may not all buy it, but I want you to ask everybody. Those are the two things I want you to do. That year, she made $495,000. So what I'm talking about is operating at a standard. So if we're seeing 30 people, that's the standard. What are we asking 30 people to do? They don't all have to do it, but you have to ask. So I'm telling people, Ask them to do what you've done. So you better figure out what you're going to do first. Good, better, or best, because that's what you're going to ask them to do. Now, they may not do it, but you're going to ask everyone to do it. And you'll be able to do it with confidence because you did it. So, And the numbers you do and the, the diversity are going to come. The yeah. numbers and the diversity are going to come because you're going to be talking to all the different spans of people all the different age groups of people, and you're going to be presenting, yes, we, we you know, would you like to earn an extra $2,000 a month? Well, let me show you how. And it may or may not be for you, that's okay. But in the meantime, you get the customers, you get the other people on Who do board. you know that'd be interested in an extra $2,000 a month? Exactly, exactly. You see, that is a much more interesting conversation than who do you know has back pain? You have to start to identify what is it that you are aligning to? What does success look like? What are you aligning with? For me, success looks like a massive organization, a thriving organization of business owners making money. Of course, they're using Nikan products. Once they get involved with Nikan and they start using the products, of course, they're going to use Nikan products. Of course, the obvious will happen. What is not obvious is a massive organization. So if you're not speaking about that, if you're not creating a case for that, if your identity with success is not that, then how do you ever expect to attract it? How do you ever expect to raise the bar? I'll tell you, this comes back to a story. Wait, wait, what? I need to interrupt. The gap, 
Mike, we still need to underline the gap. So the gap is, Sherry, I did balance life. I did the, I don't even know what we called it. Anyway, I did it. I took over Randy Rolf's call for the longest time. And I did that till I was so bored. And so I couldn't stand it any longer. Activity oriented. Huh? That That's part of the earlier part of the call. That's activity okay, oriented. Sorry about that. Sorry about right. that. So anyway, no, no, okay. but the bridge is, and from your sharing, because I do sharing on Thursday morning as well, every other week, not every week. But the the bridge Mike's asking for is how do we get the people, and I'm just going to say it, into the funnel? How do we get people into the stream of either education or the products or the purchasing or the, the business avenue? And we're looking for that, that bridge. Mike, now I'm going to send it back to you because we're losing people as they fall off as we forget the assignment or we don't follow up quick enough or we're, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. okay. So there is going to be something that you're going to be hearing about. It's a challenge that involves the, the, the power band. We're going to do it. We're going to all get crazy and you know, the water bucket challenge, whatever we're going to do the balance challenge. And we're going to get out there and we're going to go viral with this and you're going to do it in the streets and whatever you're going to get people videoing you do 30 second 50 second one minute i'm going to actually get my son i'm hiring my son to help me do one in the streets of toronto as a template for how you guys can do this we're going to create a buzz we're going to do what we know we can do and nobody else can we're going to create excitement and enthusiasm with one demo that gets people literally going what the f that's exactly happened to me uh, several times in the last two weeks. I did so. it. I did it today. At, well, I did it today at Walmart with a wristband, and the the kid he he just couldn't believe it. He took the phone, added his information into my contact. He said, "Here, let me let me put it in. I can put it in faster." It has to be that simple. It yep. has to be that simple. Once we have them in the interest phase, once they're interested, and then we can start telling the story and invite them into the process and the funnel. The rest takes care of itself. But obviously, our challenge has been we don't have enough people. But I don't want to drop, bring a whole whack of people into a process with low expectations. What are you going to do with these people to give them the best possible outcome? And this goes back to a story. Way back, I met a guy dressed beautifully. He had a beautiful gray suit on. I met him in the lobby of a hotel. He wanted to know about Nikan. He came from an ad that I ran talking about Japanese giant launching and whatever. So we meet in the lobby, do the whole spiel. And he says to me, do you think I could make money with this? Because he had lost some $11,000 in failed attempts at this, that, and the other. I said, yeah, I think you could. And he believed me. And he's, you know, he asked me if I was making money, he asked me to see my checks. I showed him three consecutive checks, all in the 20,000 range. And he was like, well, okay. Anyway, here's the, here's the standard. Here's the key. When I told him what he needed to do, I said, look, you don't have to do this, but you need to do this if you want to succeed. I'm not going to tell you a lie. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you want to build a successful business, you have to duplicate and you have to set a standard for what you're duplicating. There's good, there's better, there's best. I talked about that. He didn't have the money to even sign up, dressed the way he was, made a beautiful impression, but he didn't even have the money to actually sign up. And he told me that. And here's what I said to him, because I had a standard. I said, well, when you solve that problem, give me a call. Now I said it in so many words and I told him a story, but at the end of the day, what I said is when you solve that problem, give me a call, because that's the problem. If you have the desire, you'll figure it out. And if you figure it out, I want to talk to you. Now, when I sent that guy away, I thought for, for sure, I'm never going to hear from this guy again. But three months later, I get the phone call and it was him. He got the money. That's exactly how he opened the call. I got the money. Now, what I'm saying to you is, if you were to ask that gentleman who became a millionaire with Nikim, what was the lesson, the greatest lesson that Mike taught you? He will tell you that story. Because you know how many times he sat down with somebody who didn't have the money? What do you think he did? What do you think he said? I know how it feels. I was that guy. 
and here's what I did. And because he set a standard, he duplicated people who joined the business with real intent and demonstrated that intention by investing in themselves. And that's what he duplicated. Now, if you're not duplicating a standard in your business, if you don't set a standard, if you don't duplicate a standard, you're going to be chasing rabbits. But if you set a standard, they're going to be chasing you. And so what I'm talking about doing right here, right now, is recognize all the things we talked about tonight. I'm going to play, I'm going to set this recording up uh, on the chats and you can play it back. And I encourage you to play it back because if you put the string of information together, you're going to go, oh boy, this is a real different way of doing things than maybe I've been doing for the last one, two, three, five years, 10 years. It sets a standard. And that is what is what is critical to the identity and the success, the aligning with success. It sets a standard. And that's what we want to attract. People who want to be part. Let me tell you something. They're lining up by the thousands to pay Grant Cardone thousands of dollars to hear him lecture them on what they can do to make money. People are doing it by the thousands. Why? They're willing to invest money to learn about how to make money. No products to show for it, just an education. By the thousands, and they're spending thousands of dollars and traveling all over the place to spend time with this guy. Why? Because the desire to make money is still there, very much so. But he sets a standard that people want a piece of. If you don't set a standard that people are going to be attracted to, that people are going to want to be a piece of, you're setting the bar too low. You make Nikan out to be nothing important, nothing valuable, nothing urgent. But when you set a certain standard because you represent an identity, you represent a company, you're the CEO of a reputable, respected company in partnership with a company that matters, you're setting a standard that people are going to want to associate with. You're going to attract people who are going to want to associate with that standard. You need to be the standard bearer. With that, thanks everybody for joining. Look forward to the playback. Please share it. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Remember Master Call on Saturday, everybody. Master Call. Master Day. Saturday. Master Day. Yep. Yes. See you then. Thanks, Good Mike. call, Martin. Thanks, Mike. Great call. <clears throat>